Suez at Carlisle. The Lean Two side are away to Cardiff. That means a round trip of just over 600 miles or a standard of, 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 of a quality game. Like for every game matters so much. And this season, more than ever, with the Saracen situation, it's left an opportunity in the top two and the top four for somebody. Good afternoon, welcome to the inner workings of Deepdale. Thank you very much for uh, watching the Pink and Match Day vlog. Uh, I am Connor Southwell and we are here today, of course, for the FA Cup third round tie. Norwich City against Brecon at Deepdale. Norwich, of course, haven't won an FA Cup tie uh, in the third round since uh, in seven years. So it would be nice to see Norwich City's name in the fourth round hat uh, on Monday with a, with a victory at, uh, at Deepdale today, although Preston themselves uh, have had a, a, an odd season in the championship. They've, they're 10th in the league. They, they were right up there challenging, but have fallen away ever so slightly now um, after two successive um, league defeats. But Alex Neal, of course, former Norwich City manager, will be keen to avenge that uh, here today. So it's going to be an interesting game. Norwich City not going to have it easy. Uh, we certainly expect um, plenty of changes to uh, Daniel Falker's 11, but we shall see. And uh, you can follow my day here on the Pink and Match Day vlog. Here are the teams for the FA Cup third round side. Norwich City going to be wearing their yellow and as you can see eight changes from the side that play Crystal Palace on New Year's Day. Michael McGovern, uh, Moritz Leitner, Onel Hernandez, Jamal Lewis, Marco Stephen, Tom Tribal, Ibrahim Amadou and a first start for Adam Ida, uh, the 18 year old. Big day for him, his uh, first Norwich City start since that game against Crawley in the League Cup in August, which uh, we won't talk about too much. For Preston, I suppose the key line really for in, in terms of Norwich is that Declan Rudd is on the bench. Uh, Connor Ripley, uh, the young goalkeeper, getting a chance to uh, to start in this competition. Plenty of changes for them as well. Paul Gallagher on the bench. He scored the goal that knocked Norwich City out of the competition in 2015. That led to Neil Adams losing his job as manager and Alex Neal replacing him. David Nugent uh, also on the bench. He loves a goal against Norwich's rivals, Ipswich Town. We're hoping that uh, it, he doesn't decide to do the same against Norwich today. And if I just pan up in that end there, you can see a smattering of Norwich City supporters, uh, hardy souls who have made the trip, long trip up to the Northwest today and to Deepdale to hopefully see their team progress in the FA Cup. Deepdale, although well, it couldn't have gone much better, could it, given Norwich City have a 3-0 advantage going into the second half here at Deepdale. Adam Ida with two of the goals, the first one is wonderfully taken. For me, uh, people will talk about the finish in the past from Stephen, but it's Ida's movement. He goes from the left-hand side and sprints right across the back of the defender, gets the ball played through, shows a burst of pace and coolly and calmly slots it past Ripley. And then from there, Norwich have two gifts. Hernandez cuts inside from the left, shoots on his right, and uh, Ripley just goes under him, really. Should do better. Uh, and then the third one, uh, Hernandez is played through by Steeperman. And uh, the ball falls for Ida after a uh, miscued clearance by uh, Ripley again. And Ida coolly from out. 35 yards, maybe pushing 40, lofts it over the goalkeeper and into the back of there. Wonderful finish. And in truth, Norwich haven't really been had to 
had to get out of second gear. Um, there have been a, a few um, clear uh, passes where we've, we've seen the difference in terms of levels. Um, Norwich have conceded a possession a couple of times and where they've been punished in the Premier League, they haven't quite been punished in the same way here. Preston have missed a lot of chances, but they probably, probably deserve the lead. Um, and, and like I say, two gifts. And there was a period between the first and the second goal where Preston, Preston really did crank up the pressure, but just couldn't find that. Uh, that equalising goal which could have changed the game in honesty um, but yeah there we go Norwich moving the ball around quite nicely Marco Stephens finding pockets of space really well um, Ida has held up the ball well and, and it's all round centre forward play has been quite effective um, and this isn't by any means uh, a turned corner or anything like that because two of the goals were such gifts but um, momentum can be built from wins and sometimes you do need that luck and Norwich haven't had that luck um, this season for whatever reason um, and this year they've been they've, they've, and, and today they've been given two massive slices of luck and probably deserve that in fairness but they lead here and uh, who knows hopefully if the second half continues in that way we're going to be talking about a, uh, a potential fourth round tie which is uh, we haven't been able to speak about since Chris Hewton's era um, I believe but there we go Norwich City 3 the up in detail couldn't, couldn't go much better than that Good evening, one all. Welcome to Deepdale in the aftermath of not just the Norwich City win, a Norwich City FA Cup win. The first time in seven years that Norwich will find themselves in the fourth round draw come Monday. Whew, we can start talking about a cup draw a little bit, can't we now? Or a cup run, rather. Uh, certainly by Norwich City standards, this is one. But it wasn't perhaps as, as easy, or maybe easy isn't the right word, but as straightforward as the 4-2 scoreline suggests Norwich City were made to work here today um, they were gifted two of their goals certainly but also there was a degree of uh, professionalism in, in, their, in their play as well and ultimately we've got to start by talking about Adam Ida haven't we the, the star of the show 18 years of age gets his, his uh, second Norwich City start of course the first one came against Crawley in August where he was involved in, uh, in the goal that meant Norwich lost 1-0 and what a response that was today from, from the young lad. Um, an unbelievable performance, not just his goals, because his goals will take the, the headlines, but equally his movement and the way that he held up the ball and brought other people into play was simply phenomenal. And um, he gave Norwich a different presence than what they usually possess when they have Timmy Pukki. And that's certainly not a criticism on Norwich's Finnish um, striker, but certainly shows what he could add to a Norwich City side uh, if he was given an opportunity and I mean the first goal uh, the finish is brilliant and, and Marco Stiefman gets played through brilliantly but his movement is unbelievable and it is it's very clever he goes right out to the left hand side he's almost got chalk in his boots from the touchline he then glides across before uh, running onto Stiefman's pass and, and putting it in the back of the net side footing it into the back of the net really cool finish putting Norwich City 1-0 up from after 90 seconds and from there the tie never really looked in doubt to be completely honest there was a, a little spell after Norwich's first goal between the first and the second goals where Preston looked a little bit lively they were putting crosses into the box they were trying to make things a bit more of an arm wrestle than what Norwich City wanted and they did have some joy with that Jaden Stockley went very close to the header Darnell Fisher uh, made Michael McGovern work in the Norwich City goal and it, it certainly wasn't straightforward that second goal was pivotal however and um, once again, Ida was, was sent through, tried to chip the goalkeeper on that occasion. The clearance falls to Hernandez, he cuts inside and his shot goes right underneath Connor Ripley. It's a, a really poor error from, from the Preston North End goalkeeper and into the back of the net. And from there, really, we, we're always uh, going to be talking about a Norwich City fourth round tie, I think, in this competition. Um, 
And yeah, the first goal is, is calamitous from, from Ripley again, comes out of his goal, comes charging out of his goal, um, miscues his, his clearance completely. It lands to, to the foot of Ida, who still has a lot to do from probably 35 yards, and he, he lobs it over the goalkeeper and into the back of the net. Unbelievable finish, 3 0. Um, and the first half for me really displayed the levels. Uh, between the two sides. Norwich City, of course, a Premier League side, Preston North End, 10th in the Championship, two uh, successive league defeats prior to this game. And uh, when Norwich City did squander possession, instead of finding that leading in a direct chance, a big chance that would be converted, as, as they do week in, week out in the Premier League, they had an opposition who was squandering them, who were... Um, who were missing opportunities, and that's something Norwich City haven't really faced much this season. Um, probably two, three, maybe even four chances between the first and second goals, which uh, which Preston just didn't quite make Norwich City pay for or work for, particularly in in their play. Um, and for me, it just goes to show the levels, I think, uh, because the Championship you get away with things a little bit more because of the quality of your your opponents and. Look, that's not to say Preston lack quality, because I certainly think in Josh Harrop, they have a wonderful footballer. But what Norwich did do was keep the ball, and they never really looked like they got out of second gear in that first half. It was um, simple, easier, shall I say, to locate space. It was easier to, to uh, locate and break um, the, the shape, and Lewis did that on, on two occasions, really stabbed in the pass to Marco Steepman, who was terrific this afternoon, and um, found a pocket of space pocket of space a lot easier than he did whether that's because Norwich had more of the ball and so he could neglect some of the defensive duties that we've seen this season or whether he was um, simply made to look better because of the quality of, of the players around him to to uh, and, and I don't apologize for saying that because the step up hasn't he hasn't been quite able to make it but what he does show against the championship side is he really stands out and I, I think anyone watching the first half would have thought goodness me Marco Sigmund looks a different footballer um, I mean, three 0 up at half time. They're in cru cru uh, cruise control, but they didn't take the foot off the gas. It was, um, and, and Preston didn't lie down either. In fairness, they came out with enthusiasm, with a hunger, got a goal back. Uh, I think three minutes after half time, which was um, uh, a corner again, another set piece flicked on, and Bowden flicks on um, to make it three one. Um, Adam Ida then gets played through, goes around the goalkeeper, is uh, is fouled by Ripley, who who uh, had an afternoon to forget really, and. Ida slots up uh, or steps up rather to, to take the penalty and Cooley dispatches it into the uh, into the bottom right hand corner. Brilliant penalty. He scores his hat trick um, and Norwich four one up. And like I said, I mean from two 0 it was pretty conclusive. But at four one, there was no chance that Norwich City weren't going to find themselves in the next round of the FA Cup. Um, but you've got to praise their professionalism. Um, you've got to say the players that came in did the job that was expected. I think. They dealt with the press that Preston tried to spring on them a lot, lot better today because um, their midfield was locating spaces a bit more, a bit easier than they do against uh, Premier League sides who perhaps press uh, as a whole as opposed to perhaps sporadically, which was a little bit about how Preston did it today. Um, they contained attacks quite well. They were solid within their structure. Okay, they still conceded two soft goals, um, which is undoubtedly a little bit of a frustration on today's game, but. It was a performance that they won, and we all know what that Cardiff victory in the Carabao Cup sparked last season. Now, that's not to say this victory here at Deepdale will spark a, a revival or um, even ensure that Norwich City go on and get points in the Premier League. But what it does do is allows players to state their claims, and a few people did that today, I felt. Um, Tom Tribal was, was nice and tidy on the ball, apart from the couple of occasions in the first half where he dispossessed it, although that was more about limited options as opposed to him um, not making the right decision on the ball or keeping it for too long. Uh, Steepman, as, as I've mentioned, um, Campwell was quiet today in, in fairness, um, and, and Ibrahim Amadou and Christoph Simon managed Jaden Stockley quite well and his physique well. And um, Where Preston really hurt Norwich was exposing the high fullbacks, which we saw last season, didn't we, a lot, when... Norwich and uh, when, when uh, Byram and Lewis really pushed forward, they did expose gaps, and that, and that allowed Harrop um, to, to run into, in particular, who, who was impressive today, um, and, and and Brad Potts as well on the other side. But yeah, this this is a, a Norwich win that is is positive. Obviously, a win away from home in the FA Cup. This was a difficult place to come. Um, it was a difficult draw, really, against a, a Championship side who were going well up until recently have a lot of momentum I think Alex Neil obviously 
this isn't a competition he prioritises, but Norwich still had a job to do here today, and, and they did that. And um, it was their quality showed. I think in possession, they they used the ball really well today, really intelligently. They broke the lines well, um, and it and it was a it wasn't an outstanding performance, but it was it was a, a performance that was enough to get the job done. And like I say, it was comfortable. I think is probably the word I'd use particularly getting that early goal, didn't really allow Preston to settle. It always felt like they were chasing from there on in and Norwich could then assert themselves a bit more because there was that increased desire and that increased hunger from Preston to go after the ball, to, to try and affect the game essentially and try and get themselves back in the game. It didn't quite work the way that, that they'd hoped. But there we go, it's a win in the FA Cup. We can start talking about a cup run. I'm sure um, <laughs> numerous people will be dreaming of Wembley, but we won't quite get there. Yet the uh, draw for this for the fourth round of the FA Cup is on Monday evening, so we'll find out uh, who Norwich City are up against them. But uh, hopefully a, a shorter trip than this one. But uh, it's been an enjoyable afternoon at Deepdale for, for Daniel Farker's men, and, and certainly one that they can take a lot of positives from.